This is such a juicy topic. I really don't even know where to begin. My notes feel, you know, I've, uh, my head is flooding with all sorts of other ideas besides these uh, that I've put before my, uh, my, myself on these pieces of paper today. Certainly, I'd like to just say that um, when you're on a panel, it's much more interesting to sit on one than sit through one. So I will, you know, work very hard to play to type and make it lively and interesting. And there's been many swipes against auction house people tonight. And as I am the auction house person on this panel, I will get to sort of support and defend uh, the position in place of the auction house as sort of an ethical player. But in reading the proposition over and over again, the art market is less ethical than the stock market. Of course, I had to read this multiple times, and I had to analyze every word. Um, certainly, colonizing the word ethical will help make you the winner tonight. And something ethical is described as proper conduct and good living. An essential aspect of ethics is the, is, is the concept of the life worth living, that each of us aspires to this quality of life and aspires to have the kind of life that allows us to sleep at night and live an ethical, good life that makes it all worth living. Um, a few things basically need to be established here. Art is not a pure commodity. It's not an ordinary commodity. While uh, it certainly is bought and sold and traded, the motivations for um, the place of art in our society, uh, the, ma the motivations for its existence and everyone who plays within the game of the art world are inc incredibly conflicting, in fact. So my premise depends on the concept that the art market does not exist without the art world. That, um, in fact, the art world adds hugely to the conscience of the art market. Um, what do I mean by the art world? I mean uh, the, the entire museum profession, critics, curators, uh, conservators, um, other sorts of people in the cultural production business, writers, um, graphic designers who work with artists, etc. Art is valuable emotionally, intellectually, historically, in a way that other commodities are not inherently. The motivations for becoming part of the art world are too multiple and varied. The rewards are too varied among the various groups. A, uh, an artist becomes part of the art world for a completely different set of reasons than a dealer does, than a critic does. Um, so while there is, in the art world, there are too many different uh, rewards, the reward structure is fractured and varied, whereas in the stock market, presumably there is a singular reward, which is financial compensation. Within that, there is not really an ability for um, ethical behavior to, um, it's hard to, it's hard to get into ethical run-ins because everybody has a completely different system of reward and a completely different ethic reason for existing within that. Um, part of what I, uh, what I put forth here is that art is a bit like physics. It, it can exist both as wave and as particle. So it is at once something that is bought, sold, traded as a commodity or as so something like a commodity. And it exists in this sort of higher plane of um, emotional, intellectual, historical, and, uh, and, and cultural meaning and, and, and cultural relevance. Um, I believe that there's something that exists in the art world, that exists in the art market, that makes it completely different from the stock market. And that is something that I would call pressure of a common pool, which is a sort of basic economics 101 theory and idea that things that are um, uh, precious in the public domain that no one exactly owns, let's say like aquifers, you know, uh, groundwater, forests, fisheries, things of this kind, are in fact, um, there's a kind of rule of conduct about how people engage within them, which is essentially, you know, more or less ethical. People who do not behave well within these common public um, uh, treasures are in fact outliers or criminals and are really quickly rooted out. And that those of us who participate in this pressure of a common pool um, participate ethically and carefully. I believe works of art are something that give us tremendous pleasure. Um, they really, are, you know, all the beautiful platitudes about feeding our soul and carrying us through difficult times, all of this is entirely true, particularly now, and that we all treat works of art in the same coveted fashion with care, respect, and preciousness that works of art deserve. If you break these rules of engagement, you are a criminal or an outlier. Um, people who know art, uh, people who collect it, artists who make it, Collectors who very much covet it really know that they are only um, temporary custodians of works of art. It's kind of like being a foster parent. You don't really own these works of art. You just take care of them for a while because they're supposed to outlive you and you're supposed to pass them on to someone else. So as long as that is the ethos that surrounds a work of art, um, how this object is understood in the world and in the marketplace will always be different than something 
that trades as pure commodity. So with the position that the art market is le less ethical than the stock market, um, the art world is by far more ethical than the stock market. Uh, it has a conflicting set of, uh, it has a very, a very varied and various numerous reward system among its various participants, as opposed to the singularity of money that comes from the stock market. And the actual object traded is very different than uh, a share of stock uh, in all of its principles, properties, ideas, and values. And that is why I am arguing against this proposition tonight. Thank you.